Now, significant figures are a way of approximating numbers. And when we're working with significant figures, we've got to use these rules here. And hopefully they'll become clearer as we work through the examples, which I'll be showing you. But briefly, if we take the digit just after the last significant figure, if it's five or more, we round up that last digit. And if it's four or less, we leave the last digit as it is. And when it comes to working with whole numbers, we need to fill in any gaps before the decimal point with zeros. So what I've got here is a set of examples that we're going to be working through. We're going to be looking at working with whole numbers in this column here and decimals in this column. And you'll notice that I've used these abbreviations here, 1SF, 2SF, etc., short for one significant figure and two significant figures. You'll notice this notation is often used in textbooks. I've also starred several of these questions here because I feel they are of special interest and important to this tutorial. So do make sure that you look at those ones. Now, at any point, you might want to stop the video and try to answer some of these questions. Do that, please, and fast forward just to check out your answers. And at the end, you might want to try this challenge question where you've got to write this decimal to one, two, three, four, and so on, up to 10 significant figures. And you'll find the answers to this in the video if you click the link up in the top right hand corner here. OK, so let's get started working with 627. We've got to round this to one significant figure. And the first significant figure is the first digit that you see in this number here, the six. When it comes to this number here, the second significant figure will be the second digit in. From the six, it will be that two. So when we're working with 627, approximating it to one significant figure, that means we're trying to look at the value of this six. It represents six in the hundreds column, 600. And we're looking to see whether this number is closer to 600 or the next hundred up, 700. Well, clearly it's closer to 600, with 650 being in the middle. OK, 627 closer to 600. So the answer is, in fact, 600. But you might not want to look at it like that. You might want to just use these rules here. And if we apply those rules, we look to the next digit, to the right of the six, which is a two. It is four or less. So we do not round this number up. We leave the last digit, this digit here, the significant digit as it is. And we fill back these two places with zeros. OK, using that rule there for whole numbers. So we end up with 600. When it comes to 627, to two significant figures, the second significant figure is in the tens column. In this case, it represents the number 20. So counting in tens, this number here, 627, is between 620 and 630. And clearly, it's closer to 630. So 630 would be our answer. But if we use these rules here, looking to the next digit after the two, it's a seven, it's five or more. So we would round this up. We would add one to that two, giving us six, three, which I wrote here. And we fill back down to the decimal point, which is at the end of the number here with zeros. So we just add that one zero in. Now, when it comes to 908 to two significant figures, I mark this as special interest purely because 9 is the first significant figure. We do now count this zero in as our second significant figure. And applying the rules up here, the next digit is an 8. It's 5 or more. OK, so we add 1 onto the 0. It becomes 9, 1, and then we fill back with zero. So we only have one place to fill there, 910. And you can see this zero is in the tens column and it would be between 900 and 910, 
908 is closer to 910. When it comes to doing this one to one significant figure, the first significant figure is that three there, standing for thousands. We look to the next digit, it's a seven, it's five or more, add one onto the three then, round it up to four. Fill back with zeros those three places, 4,000. And you can see that 3,750 is closer to 4,000 than it is to 3,000. Right. Next one, two significant figures. The seven is the second significant figure there. Look to the next digit, it's a five. Five or more, round up, add one to the seven. 3,800 is what we get for that one. Filling back those two places there with zeros. Now the next one is of special interest, purely because to three significant figures, one, two, three, the five is the third significant figure in. You'll notice we've got a zero to the right. It doesn't affect the five, it's four or less. So we don't add one onto the five. We just write it as three, seven, five, and fill back with zeros. It turns out to be the same number, okay? With this one, this one sometimes causes a few problems for some people. I like to think of it as a continued rollover. You'll see why. Three significant figures then, we've got around this two. The third significant figure in is that nine there. So looking to the right, we've got a five here, and that means we have to add one to the nine. Well, if we add one to the nine, we're going to get 10, but we write a zero here and we roll that one from the 10 over to the six and add that one to the six, giving us a seven. So we end up with four, seven, and we fill back those two places there with zeros. 4,700. We're effectively rounding this number up to the nearest 10. It's between 4,690 and 4,700. And it falls right in the midpoint of that interval, so we round up, 4,700 there. Now we come over to the decimals. This first one, 206.038, rounded to four significant figures. The two is the first significant figure, the zero is the second significant figure, six the third, and this zero here becomes our fourth significant figure. We're rounding this to the nearest tenth, but we can look at the next digit. It's a three, it's four or less, so we do not add one to the zero, and we just end up with 206.0. Now in this next example, three significant figures we're gonna round it to, and the third significant figure in is that six. And here, we look to the right here, we've got a zero, we don't need to add one onto six because it's four or less. So we just end up with 206. And notice that we have a slight difference here between the two numbers, okay? Now with this next one, I've marked this one of special interest purely because we've got to round it to two significant figures and the second significant figure is here. It falls on this whole part, okay? Now, Looking to the next digit, it's a six, it's five or more, so we need to add one to that zero. So it becomes two, one. And we need to fill back to the decimal point with zeros. We've only got one place here, so it's just 210. Now, the next one, one significant figure. And we've got to be careful here because the first significant figure is not this zero here, nor this zero, nor this zero. It is the six in cases like this, okay? So the six becomes our first significant figure. Look to the next digit, it's five or more, so we need to round up that six. Add one onto it and we end up with 0.007. Doing it again, this time to two significant figures. The seven is the second significant figure in. The zero, is less than a five, so we just leave this digit unchanged. So we end up with 0 0.0067. And finally, to three significant figures here, the third significant figure in 
is this zero here. Remember that six is the first, seven is the second, third one is this zero. The three here doesn't mean that we round this up because it's four or less. So we just end up with 0 0.00670. Okay, so hope you're able to get to grips with this idea. So just to remind you then, you might want to try this challenge question, rounding this up to one, two, three, four, and so on, up to 10 significant figures. I've picked this because I feel that this will give you a good grounding in what we've been talking about here in the one question. If you want to see the answers, do go up to the top right hand corner then and check out that video. Thanks for listening then and hopefully you've now nailed significant figures.